Our blessed Heavenly Father, we stand before you to honor you as we gather in worship for this service, for this Holy Communion and Baptism service. Thank you that you have given us your Son, Jesus Christ, and given him the name above all names. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow whether things in heaven, on earth, or beneath the earth. Every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And so we give you highest respect, Lord Jesus. We give you honor in this service, Lord Jesus. May you take preeminence in everything we do together, not only at this service, but in every moment of our lives. What a powerful name. What a wonderful name you have. And we are privileged to pray in your precious name. Amen. Beloved in God, you're very welcome to this service. Thank you for coming to be part of this worship. It's a special service. We have Holy Communion. We have Baptism. We have Thanksgiving, this being our first Sunday in the month. Do remain standing and we'll sing that commitment hymn. Stand up, stand up for Jesus.
Lord be with you. I invite you to sit as we continue in prayer. We will invite God the Holy Spirit into our hearts to cleanse our thoughts as we continue to draw close to God. Saying together, Almighty God, our hearts are open before you and there is nothing we can hide from you. Breathe your Holy Spirit into our hearts and cleanse our thoughts so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A summary of the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Together, Lord, have mercy on us and write these laws in our hearts. Let me give each one of us a brief moment of reflection and introspection as we gather our lives before God. Every detail, bringing it before him. <clears throat> God's law reminds us that we have sinned, we have failed, we have not measured up to the requirements of God's word. We have not loved God as we ought to love him. We have not loved a neighbor as we should love a neighbor. In humility, let us come to God in confession of sin using the words of the confession prayer, saying together, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, creator and judge of all, we confess that we have sinned against you in many ways, in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, and in what we have failed to do. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. Forgive us, O oh Father, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, strengthen us that we may serve and please you in a new life. Live to your honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who has promised forgiveness to all who repent and turn back to him, may he now forgive and free you of all your sins May he renew and strengthen you to follow what is good and preserve you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is the second Sunday in the church season of Easter. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I'm known to my sheep, the collect. God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do your will, and work in us that which is well-pleasing in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll invite all of us to stand. We're going to continue in our worship in song, and the choir will lead us. Please do stand. Um, praise the Lord. How are we doing? How many of us here are students? So we are preparing for exams, right? It's a bit nerve-wracking. But God has given you this opportunity for education. And so in this song, I want you to give back to the Lord. Amen? Amen? Let's go. We're going to move like this. Let's clap our hands.
every single praise. So with this song, I want to hear every single person here give God the praise. Amen. Let's go like this.
acknowledge that it is by his might, by his strength, by him, and not by our own power. Amen.
It's only in Jesus Christ that we are able to defeat sins. Beloved, in Jesus Christ, you can take your seat, either kneel or sit as we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for loving us. Thank you, God, for dying and raising from the death to pay ransom for our sins, O oh God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the good things, because in, only in you that we are able to defeat sins. Beloved, in Jesus Christ, you know where Christ liberated you from, when sins are strained and bounded you. But Christ Jesus freed you from that state. In the silence of your hearts, only what we can do is say, thank you, Jesus, because only in him we are able to defeat sins, sins that oppresses us and make us and wealthy that separate us from the Father. Almighty God, we thank you for the things that you continue to do. We thank you because of you, who you are, God. You are great. You are mighty. You are everything. The creator, the one who created out of nothing. Receive our praise and worship this morning. We thank you, Father. We thank you for sustaining us. In you, we live, move, and find our being. We thank you that, Lord, we can breathe because of you, not by our strength. Receive our praise, our gratitude, and thanksgiving. Almighty God, this morning we thank you for us as a church. We ask that, Lord, in view and ask the power of the Holy Spirit to live according to your will, that we will nest to the broken and the fallen world in our life, that our life reflects our commitment to you, that we are safe. Beloved, in Jesus Christ, more often than not, sometimes we have the lift service, but only in God that we are able to live a life which reflects our commitment. Lord, we pray for the power. May your Holy Spirit help us and convict us and help us understand our limitations and call us to depend on you, to trust you, so that our lives, both in the public and the private, will reflect you, Jesus Christ. Lord, we are not perfect, but if you will be in us, and if you are abiding us and we are abiding you, we will be able to live according to your will. So help us, God, on our workplaces, in our families, in each and every context that you give us to minister, God. Help us, God, that this light, that we are light to the world, will radiate. Especially, God, convicting others as those in the world to know that being in Jesus Christ is good. Sometimes our testimony causes others to run away, but, Lord, we ask for forgiveness. Our testimony caused those, the pagans, who say, if this one is safe, then I'm also safe. But Lord, forgive us. Help us, God, in a broken generation and a fallen culture where everything is permissible. Help us, God, to have that conscience to only reflect and meditate of the things that give glory to you. Lord, help us. Help us, God, in our families. Help us, God, in the workplaces that, God, our life will reflect you. We pray for the church. Sometimes the church has been in the cocoon and lying, oh God. But Lord, we pray that help us because we are the body of Christ and forgive us where we have not done well. And as a church, we pray for our leaders, that Lord, as leaders, we will reflect you and we will draw other to Christ. We thank you, Jesus Christ. Pray that you will bless our church and we pray for church of Uganda, the bishops. We pray for the clergy and the laity. And Lord, for the mission of Christ in the province, that Lord, you will continue to advance this unchanging gospel truth in our province and in the world. And we thank you, Jesus Christ, that we will stand firm for the gospel. We thank you, God, bless us. And we pray for beloved and brethren here in Tonic of Chapel, God. We pray that you have called them from different places to fellowships. And Lord, here we are. We commend our life to you. And as a family in the body of Christ, Lord, we pray that you reign supreme in our life and cause us to be united in serving you. And may our worship God here in Tony Croft Chapel Church will be one which is not directed to any individual but directed to you, Jesus Christ. May we look to you, Jesus, because you are the center of everything. In you, things galvanize and all. And Lord, let us trust this. And as a body of Christ here in Tony Croft Chapel Church, Lord, we commend ourselves to you. 
And we pray, be true in each one of us. And may your Holy Spirit move and bind us together. The bond of the triune God, the Father, and the Son will be reflected here truly and in reality in this church. That Lord, as we profess your glory and your name, our life will profess this in everywhere God will take us. We thank you, God, for our country, Uganda, and we pray for the current ruling by the court. We thank you that we continue to stand for the truth and protecting the family. And Lord, we put all those voices and chaos, ideology and philosophy that come to distort the morality in our country. Lord, I pray that you cause our leader to continue standing firm, both the church and the government, to promote morality and to promote the truth. And Lord, we pray for those who have taken the part of transgression and inequality and sins of God. We pray. Do not kill them, but Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit will cause them to be convicted. So we pray for those who have departed from the truth, that all issue by the power of the Holy Spirit in love will cause them to understand there is no hope in the world, but only in Jesus Christ. We thank you, Almighty God, for our university. We pray for the leadership. We thank you for the fire you have brought us this particular semester and for the provision and sustenance, for the wisdom you have bestowed upon the leaders of the university as they plan and advance the mission and the vision of this university. We thank you, Jesus Christ, because you have been with us. The center of excellence in the art of Africa, the center of excellence reflecting Christ to the world, training men and women across the world who will understand the power of Christ then they will combine with the knowledge that they acquire from here to go and transform the world. So we thank you, Jesus. Continue blessing our leaders. Continue blessing partners and students, sponsors and parents. And Lord, we commend to you those students who have not commit, finished their tuition, that Lord, you are God the provider. Provide to them. Even if it remains a few days, even Monday begin exam, Lord, I pray. A day could be a thousand years, and a thousand years could be a day or a second of God. So we pray, Lord, let them up, up in you and cause your miracle provisions upon them. And Lord, I pray that your wisdom will continue to sustain them. And for those who are not reading God, they will not pass only in prayers, but they should work at God. I pray your Holy Spirit will cause for those who are striving to excel, that Lord, your excellence will bestow upon them through hard work. And Lord, I pray you guide them. Keep them in good health as they do the exam. Give them the spirit of remembrance and give them the synergy and the energy to work hard and to excel. We trust in Jesus Christ. You have brought them here. You have brought them this far not to disappoint them. You have brought them here because you know them by name and you will give them excellence. We thank you, Almighty God, for the families present here. And Lord, it comes to you in humility, praying even to the sick members in our family. Our hope in you. Uh, is in you, God. The psalmist says in Psalm 23, verse 1 to 2, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not warm. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still water. Lord, this is the hope for those who are weak and sick. I mean, he asks, and Lord, we call and trust for your healing. No matter how long we take, God, we believe Jesus Christ. Things might be delayed, but never deny in your kingdom. So we pray for healing to reign. For those who are not feeling well, we pray for healing to reign in their life, both physical and spiritual. Almighty God, we ask in humility and trust with Jesus Christ, the healer, that heal those who are sick. Beloved, you might be hoping for healing for long. You can mention the name of that passion. We continue to trust. Days and years may go, sickness may remain, but God himself has a time to deliver. May God deliver those who are sick, I mean it's us. And Lord, we trust you with confidence and assurance that you are God wills. We thank you, Almighty God, for love to flourish in the family. In some families, God, especially even those who are not saved and the pagans, there is violence. Love has turned to hatred and jealousy, griefs and divisionism. But Lord, I pray you alone will reign in our families and cause unity. We pray for husbands and wives, those spouses, and ministers as here, the Lord, you will reunite, ignite love. You will bring them together. You will bind them and you continue to flourish in our family. Almighty God, we thank you for those who will be baptized today. We ask that your Holy Spirit will bestow upon them and you continue to use them. And we pray that they will live to serve you. We thank you for the word of God today. And we ask for your servant whom you prepared a long time ago to bring forth your word, that you use her to bring forth your word trust. And this word will align our wills, our desire, and we will live according to your way. Only that our life should reflect the word we hear. 
so that we are doers and hearers of the word, not only hearers and non doers. We ask all this in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. To this I hope, my hope is only Jesus. Oh, the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. This morning, we are going to admit two people into the family of God. We are privileged to have Reverend Canon, Professor Edison Kalenjo, part of our ministering team today, but also will participate in that liturgy of baptism. But I want to invite him now to come and greet us and give us an update about Mama Dorothy. Prof, please do come. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to thank each one of you for the prayers you have been offering for us and you continue to offer for us regarding Mama Dorothy. And uh, recently one student surprised me, not surprised, but challenged me. And she told me that God has told her that she should now be bringing her tithe to me for the care of Dorothy. So chaplain, if you have noticed a decline in your tithe revenue, <laughs> That's what is happening. But I want to thank each one of you. You have prayed for us. You have given us financially. And as a family, we are very, very grateful to you. The update I would like to share with you is that as family, we reached an understanding with the, the intensive care unit in Mulago that we could do what they were doing here at home and asked if they could release us to be at home. So they gave us conditions. They said they had never done it, but they gave us conditions to put in place if they were going to allow that. So it took us over a month to put those conditions in place. And once they were satisfied, they released her to us. So since 27th of last month, Dorothy is with us here at home. And, uh, those same conditions she was in in Mulago, which means that visitations are very restricted. Even for me, I have to put on a mask <laughs> when I'm going to, to pray with her and read God's word to her, but continue to pray for us. And if you come, you can pray with us in the sitting room, even if you may not be allowed to see her. The nurses will not allow that when you come to see us. But the Vice Chancellor and Mam Pesh can be allowed in to see her on your behalf. <laughs> can be allowed in to see her on your behalf. But I want to thank you so much for your support. I've felt supported and as family we feel very supported. Between us and Dorothy, we have three children. The first one is Mwes Gwakambera. I'll ask him to stand up. I don't see his wife, but he, oh, his wife is there. And they have two children. Mwesigwa was actually born on this campus when I was a student. I couldn't wait. <laughs> <laughs> but what they require is that you do it properly, isn't it? So if you want to get married, consult the chaplain and do it properly. And for me, I consulted and I was allowed and actually even given accommodation. By that time, we had accommodation for married students. Where how Mukasa Library is, and my house was demolished, but it was the one next to the grid offices. So we thank you. That is Mwesikwa Kambere. The second one is Arinda, Arinda Lidia Mugeni. 
They have two children. The husband is not yet here. And our baby is Ahewa, Ahewa Wambale Katsioto and his wife, <laughs> Daphne. And it is their baby that we are going to baptize. And uh, I ask the medical people to allow Dorothy to watch the baptism online and that one be accepted. So she's watching this service online and we pray that God will continue to bless us as a family. Thank you so much and God bless you. Our firstborn was born when I was on Makerere campus but had finished school. <laughs> we shall sing, let us all stand <laughs> and sing as we go to the baptism. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be among the number, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh Lord, I want to be among the number. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when they sing the Savior's praise, oh, when they sing the Savior's praise. Oh Lord, I want to be among the number. Oh, when they sing the Savior's praise. I'll invite the families, parents, good parents, and children to be baptized to come and stand right here where I'm standing. The rest of the congregation, please do sit. Please come and stand right here, facing the clergy. When you get your order of service booklet, please turn to page 31. That's where the order of service is. <laughs> Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Hallelujah, Christ is alive. The Lord is loving to everyone. And his mercy is all over his works. Dear friends, all of us, members of the congregation, we're reminded that all people are born with a sinful nature. And our Savior Christ has said that no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born again through water and the Holy Spirit. So let us pray to God, the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, that by his great mercy, he will give these children what they cannot have by birth, that they may be baptized with water and the Holy Spirit and enter and become active members of Christ's holy church. Infants are baptized on the understanding that they will be brought up as Christians within the family of the church. As they grow up, they need the help and encouragement of that family so that they learn to be faithful in public worship and private prayer. Come to confirmation and continue to live as God wishes. Parents and good parents. The children whom you have brought for baptism depend chiefly on you for the help and encouragement they need. I now ask you, are you willing to give it to them by your prayers, by your example, and by your teaching? Dear friends, you have brought these children here to be baptized. You must promise to God on their behalf until they grow up and make the promises for themselves that they will reject evil and fight against it to follow Christ. Therefore, 
I ask these questions which you must answer for yourself and for these children. If you turn to page 34, you'll follow with the Inquisition. And I would love for you to speak loudly. Do you turn to Christ? Do you repent of your sins? Do you renounce evil? May the Almighty God pardon and deliver you from the power of darkness and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Congregation, please do stand. We will join together facing the holy table and we will affirm our faith in the triune God using the words of the Apostles' Creed, saying together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Can you sit? Pardon? Yeah. We continue on page 35. And ask for God's blessing upon this water. Almighty God, your son Jesus Christ was baptized in the river Jordan. We thank you for the gift of water to cleanse us and revive us. We thank you that through the Red Sea, you led your people out of slavery to freedom in the promised land. We thank you that through death, you brought your son and raised him to life. Gracious Father, bless this water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That your servants who are washed in it may experience with Christ his death and resurrection, to be cleansed and delivered from all sin by this water, and the Holy Spirit, may they be born again into new life and adapted as your own and received in the fellowship of the church through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Shall go through those responses once again. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who created the world? Do you believe and trust in his son Jesus Christ who redeemed mankind? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, the giver of life? I Name this child? Anaya Nema Ahewa. Anaya Nema Ahewa. I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I sign you with the cross, the sign of Christ. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Jesus crucified. Together. Congregation together, fight valiantly under the banner of Christ against the world, the devil, 
and continue his faithful soldier and servant to the end of your life. Amen. Amen. Anaya, Nema, Ahewa, receive this light. He has actually extended his hand. This is to show that you have passed from darkness to light. Shine, shine as a light, the world, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us give God a hand clap of praise. He wants his candle. She wants her candle. She wants to continue shining. Hello. Yes, it's okay. It will be fine. Name this child? Uh, James Darius Emolo. Again? James Darius Emolo. James Darius Emolo. I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I sign you with the sign of the cross, the sign of Christ. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Jesus Christ crucified. Fight valiantly under the banner of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil. Continue his faithful soldier and servant to the end of your life. Emolo, receive this light. This is to show that you have moved, you have passed from darkness to light. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go Marching in, oh Lord, I want to be among the number. Oh, when the saints go marching. My brothers and sisters, we are going to welcome officially these new members of the Church of Christ, and I'll ask you to stand. And your response is up there on the screen. God has received you by baptism into his church. Together, we welcome you into the Lord's family. We are members together of the body of Christ. We are children of the same heavenly Father. We are inheritors together of the kingdom of God. We welcome you. We remain standing for these prayers. Let us pray as we stand. Heavenly Father, bless and give the parents of these children the spirit of wisdom and love, praying that their homes may reflect the joy of the eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all those who have been baptized in your name. Gracious Lord, keep us faithful to our baptism, and in the knowledge of your Son and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessings of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. May God's blessings rest upon these children, now members of God's family. May God's blessings Guardians, friends, and relatives, 
we ask that God will bless them and only that which has planned in his in has planned for their lives will come to pass in their lives may God's blessing remain on them now and forevermore amen tukute tende Omusai gunazi sande vaza omurokozi Choir give us a song congregation please sit as we receive the children children come I want to pray for you as you go to the big church Let us pray, stretch your right hand of blessing towards these children as we pray for them. Ch children, hands together. God, our heavenly Father, we thank you for each of these children. We thank you because you know each of them by name. We thank you because you love them, you created them, in your own image. You gave Jesus for them to die on the cross on Easter day. Now we pray for them that you'll continue to guide them in their spiritual development, in their spiritual formation. We pray, O oh God, that your grace will rest upon each of these children, that there will be a light in their families. We now commit to you their classes as they go to Sunday school that your anointing will rest upon their teachers but also you'll give each of these attentiveness to the lessons they are going to learn. Lord, we ask that you protect them, that you prosper them in their school and everything that pertains to them. Bless them immensely. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We can now go to... reading of the scriptures, the episode reading for this day is 1 Peter chapter 2, 
beginning to read at verse 9. First Peter is found in the Bible. First Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 9. New Testament towards Revelation, you'll find it there. First Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of his visitation. This is the word of the Lord. We will all stand and sing the last two verses of Yet not I, but Christ within me. As we prepare to receive the reading of the gospel, please do stand. According to St. John, chap reading begins from verse 6. Glory be to Christ our Savior. John, chapter 17, reading begins from verse 6. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. You as they were, and you gave them to me. They have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them 
I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All minds are yours, and yours are mine. I'm glorified in them. And I'm no longer in the world, but they're in the world. And I'm coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in my name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I've guarded them, and, and not one of them has been lost, except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and this thing I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I've given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask that you turn around you and wave to at least 13 people. <laughs> Keep counting. Now, as they wave to you, don't turn around. First receive the wave, then you turn around. It's a joy for us to be gathered together in the Lord's family in the Lord's house, worshiping our God. Join me, please, as we appreciate the choir for leading us beautifully in worship. Do we have any first-time visitors? We want to receive you. We want to appreciate you. Please do raise your hand, and we will receive you as part of this service. Yes, yes, we have someone here. Brother, you are very, very welcome to worship with us at this service, the best church in the world. So if you're looking for a congregation to belong to, we welcome you. But if you have a church you already belong to, send our love and greetings when you next uh, worship with them. There are some of you who never stood and your students this is your first time because tomorrow you are beginning exams. God is seeing you. But we welcome you and we'll pray for you even in this service as you go to your exams. Anybody for whom this week has been special, you celebrated a special day, an anniversary, a birthday, we want to join you in the celebration but also to bless you. If you are there, please do stand and we'll sing a blessing over you. We have some babies. We have a baby girl, a baby boy here, a baby girl there. Oh, there's another one here. <laughs> Fantastic. Congregation, your right hand of blessing towards them as we sing this blessing over them. May the good Lord bless you, to Jesus be true. May God's Holy Spirit remain over. We continue to remind you that the weekend to remember is coming up on the 31st of May up to the 3rd of June. It will take place in Jinja and will be hosted by the Life Ministry. Last year, it was powerful. We were there with Mrs. Me 
and others, and it was really, really powerful. I wish they ha I had the words of Mukasa Ambide to describe that experience, but my English is not that powerful, but it was wonderful. Please plan to join. The cost is 1.2 million for the four days in a hotel setting, powerful teaching, wonderful fellowship, and uh, nice food. Again, the dates are 31st of May to the 3rd of June. Last Sunday, we announced the beginning of vaccination for yellow fever. If you have been vaccinated, please put up your hand. Those of you putting up your hand, look around you to see those who have not put up their hand. <laughs> we have an opportunity today and tomorrow, <laughs> today and tomorrow, you could actually get your job after the service. Alan Galpin has been gracious to us to offer that service today. And tomorrow is a closing day. I got mine sometime last week and I'm okay. I don't have any problem. So you don't have any problem. Please be encouraged to go to Alan Galpin. Ages 1 to 60. If you are 60 years and above, you are. You, you may not go. <laughs> okay. And then this is how we gave over the course of last week. Um, beginning Sunday, the 31st of March. Our uh, offer today was 2,179,700 shillings. Tithe was 700,000 shillings. Fast fruit, 75,000 shillings. Sunday school, 273,200 shillings. Our giving at Kampala Campus was 46,600 shillings. Thanksgiving of 100,000 shillings. Offer today through the office of 52,100 shillings and tie through the office of 160,000 shillings. Uh, tithe given direct to the bank account was 1,373,000 shillings. We thank you so much for giving. <clears throat> Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I want to ask you to come and remind us of the do's and don'ts as we go to exams. <laughs> a summary is allowed, a phone is allowed, a loving your neighbor by sharing answers allowed. No, they are not allowed. <laughs> Praise the Lord, and good morning. Uh, did you notice that Mama Pesh is around? Uh -huh. And did you notice that our VC Emeritus is around? Welcome. Welcome, Dr. Senyanyi, and welcome all of you. Uh, today I thought I should just pray for the people who are sitting exams starting tomorrow. But before I pray, I need to remind you to give to Caesar. <laughs> what is Caesar's? And to God, what is God's? So make sure that your dues are all in uh, because there's going to be very strict guidelines for entering examination rooms, phones are not allowed, of course. There are also things which are called bullets. Bullets are condensed notes. Uh, some people write notes on their bodies. You don't, can't believe it. I hope not at UCU. But sometimes we have arrested thighs written on notes. So make sure we don't arrest your thigh or your hand or your handkerchief and so on. 
Uh, otherwise, we pray that you'll have a successful examination season. So let me pray for you. Please stand as candidates and we pray with you. Lord, we lift up these, your children, who are preparing for exams starting tomorrow. Thank you for the fire you have brought them in their studies and for the victories you have given to them since their primary school up to university. Give them wisdom as uh, King Solomon prayed for wisdom from above, that they may do that which is right as they sit the exams, that they will not be tempted to cheat or to be involved in any malpractice. Above all, for those who are still struggling to clear their tuition, may you intervene from on high and make a way where there seems to be no way. Provide for their parents and guardians and sponsors that they may never lack of anything in their studies. And so we pray that you sit your exams and God will be with you and give you victory. Through Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Okay. Our preacher today is one of us. She serves in the chaplaincy as assistant chaplain. She's called Reverend Kalorin Adul Ogwen. <laughs> Reverend Carol, we're happy to have you today. And we pray that God will use you to bring his word to us. As we prepare our hearts to receive God's word, I invite you to stand and we'll sing together ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you.
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, which is still important and useful to us, even this present generation. Its purpose is to give us hope, to give us strength, to help us cope, and to give us guidance. We pray that, Lord, this is a word of life. Come and speak to your children using me as a vessel that is ready to be used. Father, may I disappear and you appear. That, Lord, they will not hear from me, but they will hear from you. Speak to them. Thank you for those you have chosen this morning to come so that you can speak to them. I pray that, Lord, you open our hearts. That, Lord, every distraction of the weak, the fear for exams, the fear that comes from the enemy, the voice that comes from the enemy, we silence it that, Lord, you will speak. And it's only your voice that we shall listen this morning. I thank you. Bless your holy name. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, I pray. Amen. Amen. Let us have our seats. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. And all the time. Wow, wow. Let us give him all the praise, glory, and honor. My name were mentioned. I testified in the first service about my transfer in this place. Around 20 something there of December, I received a call from the admin of the bishop that come to the diocese. I went, I didn't know why I was being called. And then I was given a letter and told, first go to the DS before you read. And then I went to the DS, uh, we read together and he said, he prayed with me. And then as the news went around that I was coming to UCU, uh, a colleague in ministry called me and said, do you know your congregation? Do you know that Professor Birohanga is there? Do you know the bishop? Do you? <laughs> and so as I look at uh, the VC emeritus, the present VC, the canons, the theologians, uh, the lawyers, the pressure gets bigger. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But yet not I, but through Christ in me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes. And so certain words do not come from the very person who is speaking. That was the voice of the enemy, the enemy of progress. I just told him I like staying with those people because whenever I make mistakes, they will correct me. Hallelujah. And I was reminded that Bishop was my lecturer for homiletics. I said, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this morning we are going to study. Actually, he mentioned the name of Kalenjo. He said he's the professor of the New Testament. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, I was, I'm just bringing this in connection to the prayer that Jesus Christ made to the Father. That the Father should protect the believers from the evil ones. Hallelujah. Some words are not uh, being spoken by the very people that they are speaking. They are pushed by some other forces. Hallelujah. Uh, this morning we are going to uh, focus on John chapter 17 from verse six, verses 6 to uh, 19. Uh, I've been given a to topic in the world, but not of the world. I will give a brief summary of John 17, and then we shall apply to our context. In this passage, Jesus offers prayer to the Father who had sent him to the world to fulfill the plan of salvation. Study tells us that this prayer Jesus made together with his disciples before they made it to the Garden of Gethsemane. So looking at verse 4 and 5, Jesus is pointing out to the ministry he did while here on earth, that he glorified the Father. And now he is asking the Father to glorify him. He interceded for the disciples and all believers that were dear to his heart. In verse 6, he acknowledges that his disciples were given to him by the Father when he was here 
in the world. And they were, they were given out of the world, the people that were living in the world. This highlights the chosen status and the unique relationship that the believers and the disciples had with God. Reading verse 11, where Jesus uh, said, I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name. He was asking, he prayed for protection, and he also prayed for oneness among believers as a reflection of the unity between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, moving ahead in verse 17, he says, Sanctify them by the truth of your word, because your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. He prayed for sanctification sanctification, for God the Father to sanctify them with the truth. He is emphasizing that the truth of God's word is a means by which believers are sanctified. The truth is embodied in Jesus Christ himself, who is the word made flesh, who is God who came in flesh to live amongst us, to do ministry amongst us, and now his time had, gone, had come to fulfill what the scripture, what he was sent for, to die on the cross, to suffer, die on the cross for our salvation. It is through the truth of the scripture, guided by the Holy Spirit, that we are convicted, corrected, and guided in our journey of faith. The word of God shapes our beliefs. It shapes our values. It shapes our actions, leading us to live a life in alignment with the will of God and his purposes. In essence, Jesus is affirming the centrality and authority of God's word in the process of sanctification and in our relationship with God, that it is through truth revealed in scripture that we continually transform and renewed to reflect the Im image of God. The process of transformation, transformation is a process. It's not a one day, it's not a one minute thing, but when we open our hearts, we have the knowledge of the truth of the word, we are continually transformed into the image of Christ. Uh, verse 18 and 19, where Jesus is saying, as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. Here he commissions the disciples, he commissions the believers to go for the purpose of proclaiming the gospel and to make disciples all over the world. For us to make disciples wherever we are placed, in whatever mission we are doing, we are to make disciples of Christ, we are to witness for Christ. And so looking at verse 11 through to 16, where our topic has been picked from, Jesus had concern for the disciples and for the believers, aware of the harsh world, how he was treated when he was sent by the Father. The world did not receive him, the world did not respect him, the world did not believe him. So as he was going to the Father, he had concern, he was troubled, and so he had to report to the Father what the work he had done and how the world is and to ask the Father to protect the people that he was given. To keep them, to guard them. He said, guard them because when I was here, I protected them, I guarded them, except the one who was destined to doom. And that was to fulfill the scripture. You say these disciples, these believers are in the world, but they are not of the world. The world may hate them because of my name, which they profess. But he said, as though I'm saying you protect, you guard them, but I'm not asking you to remove them out of the world, but that you will keep and protect them from the evil one. This reveals several important aspects 
of his concerns for believers and the strategies for his disciples. He's aware of the presence of spiritual warfare and the influence of the will of the evil one, that is Satan, the tempter, the one who was pushed and now lives, the one who has come with a plan to destroy, to give fears to the people, the one who seeks to deceive, to tempt, and to harm believers. So he emphasizes the need for divine protection and spiritual discernment and to navigate the worldly challenges. He also loved his, that his followers continue to live in the world because this is the place where they were placed and to interact the challenge, with challenges and temptations and opportunities. He does not ask for them to be removed from the world, but rather know their role and mission within the world. Know your role, know your mission, the role of which you were created, the purpose you were created, your role as a believer. What is your role as you continue living in the world? Because we are not going to space. We were created and put here. We are in the world, but we need to know we are not of the world. Who are we? Who are you? Who am I? What is my role? What am I supposed to do? Jesus requests the Father that he, Jesus requests to the Father reflects his trust in the Father's sovereignty and understanding of God's purpose for his disciple. He knew that their presence in the world is God's plan for spreading the gospel, for making disciples and being witness to him. And so while acknowledging the reality of worldly dangers and spiritual attacks, he also expresses confidence in God, in God's ability to protect, to empower the people that he worked with. Do you trust in God's ability in every challenge that you have, in every mission that you have been given, in every task that you have been given and you, you think, you cannot manage. Do you trust in his power, in his ability, in the sovereignty of God? Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ trusted in the sovereignty of God and the power to protect his followers. And so as I was reading the whole of this chapter, I kept asking, how can I apply? How can I apply this in my context? How can we apply as employees, as employers, as students, as, uh, as the married people, as siblings, how can we apply in our context? The first thing that ran into my mind was to ensure that I have to ensure the safety and the well-being of those under my care as a mother, as a priest. I have to ensure the welfare of the people that are under my care demonstrating genuine care, humility, and selfless leadership upon them, prioritizing their well-being other than personal interests. Jesus Christ prioritized the care before. He would say, after all, I'm going to suffer. After all, these people did not welcome me. After all, and then he just went, but he, he really had them in mind that he had to speak to the Father and leave some kind of guidance for the father to take care of his followers. Uh, there is also need to report back to authority. In John, in John 17 verse 4, Jesus said, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me. He's saying he has, a, he has completed the task given to him by the father and bringing glory to him. This statement highlights the importance of reporting back to authority after completing a task or a mission in a way of accountability. This is very important in every office, even in homes. It is good to report. You can be sent somewhere. You can be given money to use for something. 
and you just come. I always complain with people who live with me. I send them and I keep quiet for two days. And then I ask you, where is the balance? <laughs> because I expect if I send you to buy something, come and say it is here and here is the balance. Whether it is 100 shillings, if I want to give you and I say, okay, go and buy sweets. So there is need to report. And in the morning, I apologize that um, my chaplain, I ha you had sent me for some task and I have not yet reported. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm going to do that. This scripture has spoken to me as well. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And my head of lady, I'm going to report. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There is need to report in everything that we do so that we are people walking in the light. There is also an aspect of respect of authority. Jesus Christ was God. The Father sent him with a task. It was not an easy one. He humbled himself. He came so that the scripture would be fulfilled. He lived amongst us. He did ministry. That was respect to the authority of God the Father. He was also God. Romans 13 verse 1 and 2 tells us this. That, uh, that everyone should be sus subject to the governing authority. And the authority that exists is established by God. And whoever rebels against this, rebels against God. So there is need for us to respect authority. Uh, there is as that aspect of humility and giving our time and self to the service of God, irrespective of who we are. I know many times, me, I served in the parish, there's this issue of time. I don't have time. Time, there's this aspect of time. God created this time, and it is for us to be organized and apportion it and see the ones and also serve our soul, serve our church, and also be able to do our own. Do your own, do for God. Hallelujah. Apportion your time for the service of God. Give yourself, give whatever you have to the service of the Lord, irrespective of who you are. Hallelujah. To spouses, they can prioritize unity and mutual support in their relationship. They, in marriage, I'm not counseling. But I wedded couples yesterday. Maybe I have it fresh here. In marriage, there is, there is one plus one, which is equal to one. That is the equation. I did not do math, so you can solve that one. One plus one, they, they become one body in marriage. So there is need for unity in everything that we do and support for one another. Uh, most of us women who earn something at the end of the, year, uh, of the month, not most, some, some of us. We take it as ours. And so we want the other side to do the work because the Bible says they are the head of the family. And as a head of the family, you are supposed to fend for your family. No, we are supposed to work in unity and support one another in every aspect, whether buying food, whether paying school fees, whether doing what, we are supposed to work together. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ prayed for us that we should be one. We should be in, united in service and in everything. Hallelujah. Both partners can pray for each other so that they grow spiritually. They can pray for protection following Jesus' example of interceding for his disciples. We are also to pray for one another. Pray for the people you work with. Pray for the people who work for you. Pray for your siblings. Pray for your parents. It is our work. We are also learning this from Jesus, that he prayed for us. He prayed for the people he worked with, for the disciples. He prayed for us as believers. Praise the Lord. To the students, you can view this, that you can view your academic journey as a mission given by God. Seeking to glorify him in your study, in any kind of relationship that you have, let it be to glorify God. And in every action 
Because our action is based on choices. The choice that you make, let it be to glorify God. Remembering that you are not of the world, but you are in the world. Just as Jesus prayed for his disciples for protection and for sanctification, pray for wisdom, for guidance, for preservation in your educational pursuits. Hallelujah. And the last one that I penned down, but we can have it if it was a group discussion, we would generate even 100 points out of this very chapter. It's about unity that I talked about, the departmental unity. We are not working as individual. We work as a group, teamwork. Let us have teamwork in every department. We, we are blessed and we shall give glory to God. May the Lord bless us as we continue reflecting on this uh, John chapter 17 and generate more application. Thank you. Dear our Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, whom you sent here on earth. He did quite a ministry, and Lord, he reported back to you. This has come to us as an example that we should copy. We thank you, Lord, that you have spoken to us through your word. Continue speaking to us and guiding us as we walk through this journey in the temptious world. Knowing that we are not of the world, we should have qualities that give glory to you. Blessed be to your holy name. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, I pray. Amen. We thank you so much, Reverend Carol, for breaking down the scripture for us and helping us hear and understand what God is saying to us in John chapter 17. Beloved in God, let us all stand and affirm our faith in this triune God revealed in his son, Jesus Christ. We'll use the words of the Nicene Creed. Saying together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things we are made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, is worshipped and glorified, and is spoke through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please do remain standing. At this point, we're going to worship God with our offertory. We'll bring our offertory, our tithes to the baskets. I'll ask the head of lady to hold the basket for Thanksgiving as we give thanks this first Sunday of the month, but also as we give thanks for those who have been baptized. Choir, please begin the song. All right. We want to acknowledge that God never fails. So for those of you trusting God in this exam season, I want to let you know that God never fails. Amen? Amen. 
Let's go like this. Hakuna mungu kama wewe bwana. 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 remain standing. We want to bring our offertory, our tithe, and our thanksgiving to God in prayer. The psalmist reminds us in Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? As we come this morning, we remember all his benefits. We are reminded in a song, count your blessings, name them one by one. It will surprise you what the Lord has done. So I'm going to invite us to share in this prayer of general thanksgiving, which has been projected as we gather up every aspect of our gratitude to the Lord, saying together, 
Almighty God, O merciful Father, we, your unworthy servants, want to give you a most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We thank you for making and protecting us and for the blessing of each day. But most of all, we thank you for your inexpressible love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the ways in which we receive your grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such a proper realization of all your mercies that our hearts may be sincerely thankful and that we praise you not only with our lips but in our actions by giving up ourselves to serve you and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory now and forever. Amen. You who sincerely repent of your sins, love your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, keeping God's commandments, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to comfort you. Listen to what our Savior Jesus Christ says to those who truly turn to him. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Hear also what St. Paul says. This is a true saying to be completely accepted and believed. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Rejoice and lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. O oh Lord, Holy Father, everlasting God, it's not only right, but also a duty to give you thanks at all times and in all places. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who we remember today as a model, taking care and protecting those under his care, being accountable to the Father, humble in everything he did, consistent in the mission the Father gave him, and inviting us to be united as the body of Christ. Therefore, with the angels and archangels and with all the saints in heaven, we praise your glorious name forever saying, Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. Amen. I invite you to sit as we humble ourselves, preparing our hearts and minds to approach the holy table. We'll use the words of the prayer of humble access. Saying together, we do not come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own goodness, but in your mercy. We are not good enough even to eat the crumbs that fall from your table, but you never change. Your nature is always to have mercy. We therefore humbly ask you, gracious Lord, to let us eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and drink his blood, so that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed by his precious blood, and that we may forever dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for giving us your only begotten Son. You gave him to suffer and die on the cross for our salvation. As we receive these elements of bread and wine, in a way our Savior taught us, may we truly receive his body 
and his blood. That night, as Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat of the same, do it in memory of me. After supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks to the Father, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in memory of me. Together, all Lamb of God, takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Beloved in God, draw near with faith. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve you in eternal life.
free from your burdens of sin. There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Oh, you live daily mm, for a win. There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power. We'll join in the prayer the Lord Jesus Christ taught us, saying together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily food. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for the kingdom. The power, the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. Please do stand. We'll give glory to God using the words of the Gloria. Saying together, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks and we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive a prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We will continue in that prayer of thanksgiving after communion. Saying together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and walk to your praise and glory. Amen. Let me invite Canon Professor to come and give us the benediction. We continue in prayer as we stand. And so, my brothers and sisters, may the peace of God, which is greater than we can understand, keep and guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. May God's blessing that flow from his heavenly throne of grace rest upon your lives, my beloved, upon your families, upon your children and children's children. May God's blessing be upon our students as they write their examinations. We ask for God's blessing upon this institution and her leaders. We ask that this blessing will remain with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Go in the name of Christ.
we will sing together. Once again, we thank you for being part of this worship service.